Peace and greetings to you. This is Dr. O, the PA Pro, otherwise known as Omar Abdul Malik. I'm a physician assistant. Uh, I'm also a doctorate of health education. Uh, I wanted to talk to you all tonight about a very interesting article in The Hospitalist. This is the journal of the Society of Hospital Medicine. Now, as a PA who practices hospital medicine, um, I'm often challenged with things like time management, um, seeing a lot of patients with multiple morbidities in an extended period of time. And I do this on a, on a daily basis. I work anywhere from uh, five to six days a week, 12 hour shifts. Uh, so I, I'm kind, as a hospitalist, I'm kind of the go-to person um, in conjunction with the intensivist, who is the doctor who usually is in the, in the ICU. But it, it can be, um, I wouldn't say a stressful job. It can, um, it can cause burnout if one allows it. And uh, there's a very interesting article in here uh, talking about uh, addressing hospitalist burnout. I don't know if you can, if you can see that there. Uh, it shows a, a clinician who is looking, I guess, as these people on the verge of burnout. Um, one of the ways in which I avoid burnout is one, I'm, I'm always thankful for my job. I really enjoy what I do. Um, it's, it's very busy work. Um, there are times when it can appear overwhelming, but I try to remind myself uh, to be thankful for the job and remind myself wh why I'm there. You know, um, I don't make the, my, my issues or my challenges the problems of the, of the patients. I also try to live a very dynamic life. If you've seen my other videos, I try to spend quality time with my, my wife and children, try to exercise, um, engage in other activities, community service activities outside of the, the hospital. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's important uh, to vo avoid burnout because you can, you can really enjoy your job as I do, uh, but put, put so much in it that it's out of proportion with the rest of your life. And this can certainly cause burnout. So for those of you all that are students who are trying to go to nursing school or PA school or occupational therapy school or med school or become PAs like myself, uh, you, you'll find yourself on the verge of burnout. You know, these, the allied health care and medical care fields are, um, they're, they're very rewarding, I would say financially and uh, emotionally, but uh, you can... It can be overwhelming sometimes because you're dealing with, you know, other people's issues. You know, they're sick. They're looking to you to help make them better or help address their, their um, health care needs. And, you know, if you're not addressing your own health care needs, your own spiritual needs and physical needs and, and, and health needs, you know, you can, you can um, uh, ignore yourself and neglect yourself. And that, that can often lead to, to burnout. Uh, but yeah, it starts at how you deal with stress. You know, I used to be um, on the admissions committee at a couple of uh, physician assistant programs. And one of the things I would ask the, um, the students who were vying to get into to, uh, PA schools, how do you deal with stress? You know, and that's one of the, the key things that I wanted to know about them. You know, they had already gone through the stress of undergraduate, you know, getting the, uh, the um, GPAs, the grade point averages that they needed, you know, taking the GREs, doing the direct patient contact hours, and you know, really making themselves you know, um, above average applicants to the point to where they had gotten to the point of being interviewed. But you know, once they got in, those that were fortunate enough to get into the PA program, I wanted them to understand that you know, getting into the PA program, that's just the beginning of you know, you, you're this long surgery called uh, being a healthcare practitioner. So it, it was really, it was really interesting to me to see how many of the students answered you know, how they dealt with stress. Some chose to pray. Some would tell me that they exercised. Others would meditate. So those are things that you need to do um, if you're going to to last in this profession. Um, it's it's not a particularly easy profession. It's very demanding. Um, you have to be very, very prepared 
Um, I study every single day. And that's the, one of the things I love about being a physician assistant, and specifically a hospitalist physician assistant, is I have to re I learn something new every day. Every day, my skills and my, my knowledge, my medical knowledge base is challenged. And it has me running back to the books, you know, reading, reading journals, uh, talking to colleagues in, in different specialties. And uh, it, it's, it's um, I really enjoy it. I can't say enough about it. But if you're interested in, in becoming a physician assistant or any other type of a healthcare practitioner or medical practitioner, I would invite you to please uh, subscribe to my channel. I interview people in other aspects of the healthcare and medical field um, that are, that are uh, outside of my own field. And you might find it interesting. For those of you all who would like to become physician assistants, please feel free to contact me. I put my contact information in the, in the, um, dis in the uh, description part of the, uh, I guess, underneath the, uh, the video. But uh, I look forward to, um, to meeting you virtually. <laughs> uh, take care. Peace.